I'd like to know how to say good morning. Yes, teach me. <laughs> You're listening? Yes. Calimera. Calimera? Beautiful. Oh. How about, how about good evening? Yes, what's good evening? Calispera. Calispera? That's not Calimera difficult, is it? Calispera. Maybe you are saying you're too old to learn? <laughs> Can you remember what good morning was? Calamareo. Bruh. Casamere. And what about good evening? Cal oh, I've forgotten already. <laughs> what about hello? Yes, sir. But I found know the language that we tend to think that everyone will speak English. And we accept that. And we don't try to, to speak their language. We don't endeavouring, putting up endeavour into learning the language. I think that is a, a fault, really. Obviously for a, a holiday you don't want, I wouldn't have really liked to have gone to all the effort of learning the Greek language, but um, maybe I would have made an attempt before I came to, as I said, learn the basics, so maybe communicate with them more easily. Well, we're trying to pick words up while we're over here. Because we said we wish we could speak Greek when we're talking to the Greek people. Wish we could understand what they say. It does make a difference, I think. They all speak, all shout, and um, they speak in our language, actually, as best as they can. But we found them all very friendly, yeah. But you don't try and speak to them in their language? No, no, oh, no. no. <laughs> Can't even no. read the letters. I'm afraid I haven't mastered my own language yet. <laughs> Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Corfu most tourists see, the Corfu of the package tour and the commission-seeking courier. The laissez-faire economic policies of the Colonel's Junta in the late 1960s and early 70s coincided with the boom in foreign tourism. Corfu was the first Greek island to be exploited, massive, indiscriminate hotel building on previously idyllic beaches and bays. An airport with up to 50 flights a day in summer. A proliferation of gift shops selling tourist trash masquerading as ethnic art. So how has all this affected traditional Greek life and values? Dimitris Buas, Corfu businessman. The bad effects don't stop uh, here. They extend to the inner structure of the society, the family. We have an increase in uh, divorces. We have uh, an increase on uh, the and uh, abortions. We also have uh, an, um, a higher rate on uh, drugs, especially uh, among the young people. I think it's 8, eight to 10 percent the divorces, 20 percent the VD and the abortions. And, uh, a little bit more than 25% the drugs uh, uh, effects. I remember uh, when uh, tourism started in Greece uh, 20 years ago, most of the tourists they came here for our archaeological interest, for our museums, for to see Acropolis or so on. But now they are not coming anymore for that. They are just coming here because uh, they just want to meet people. They just want to spend a fortnight or a week under the the four S's. You know the four S's? Sun, 
sand, sea and six. There is another side to Corfu, and one that's well worth discovering, where traditional values still survive, and the generosity of Greek hospitality outweighs the commerce and the cashing in. Antonis Costayolas, boutique owner. It's not necessary to, to learn Greek. It's just a few words. I mean, with 50 words, it will be big, very big difference in her life in Corfu. Because now, if they, if they know 50 words, they can know Corfu. If they don't know that 50 words, they stay in the system of the tour operators, and that means that they don't see Corfu at all. That is the reason that they must learn a few words. It's so easy. No 50, 25. Sifnos Island in the Cyclades. It's one of the islands where Greek actress Katya Dandulaiki struggled to teach me some Greek for some of the Greek language and people programs. Uh, Sifnos was only discovered fairly recently and it still has a chance of planning its tourist development before the big operators move in. But some Greeks I talked to on the island were already afraid of losing their Greekness. Others welcome the foreign tourist as long as he or she respects the local traditions. Yanis Vasalos represents the Tourist Association of Sifnos. Do you think tourists have made any difference to Sifnos? In one way they do a difference to this place. Uh, I would say tourists, they help Sifnos in a way of making the locals have a living, you know, on it. Uh, the other way is uh, they have the effect of making people rush, in, you know. Do tourists understand the old traditional Sifnos ways? Sometimes, you know, it's difficult for them to understand, you know. They just come over here and say, spend our holidays, you know, and have a fun. And sometimes they don't really respect our traditional ways of it. But uh, I want to say this, that we need the tourists because we live by them. And they must feel, you know, they must feel uh, like being something like home. Well, I suppose one way of respecting traditional Greek culture is to have a go at speaking their own language, rather than expecting them to speak English all the time, or German. Uh, via coffees, uh, four coffees, Greek coffee. Ah, with, a, with a little bit of sugar. Four yeah. coffees. Four coffees. Yes? No fear. Yes. Greek coffee? No. Greek coffee, yes. 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 Okay. It's okay. I think uh, it's. Uh, in, in some time, this island is with big, big uh, tourism at the end of this island. And um, one friend of us had told us 
that now it's possible to see nature, to see uh, the fishermen and and some uh, Greek uh, people. But I think it's the end of this now. In some in some years, uh, if the big tourism is coming, it's not good here. I think there comes many um, discotheques and. Um, many uh, shops with tourism and articles and uh, the kindness from the people is not uh, so much than uh, usually. I tried to start with Greek, with Greek two years ago but when you are in business, when you work eight hours a day, when you also do a lot of hobbies uh, in a good way, then there is no other time for learning a language, you know. Do you think it would help oh, meeting sure, Greeks? To sure, it, it helps a lot because uh, you become more warm with uh, them. Also, when you speak just some words, they become more friendly to you, especially in the villages in the back country. I saw that when I stayed in Crete this time again for two weeks. When you speak just some words, it's more uh, fine for them. You are more accepted. The most important tradition and the biggest celebration in the Sifniat calendar is the festival, or Panagiri, of Ascension Day, Analipsis, 40 days after Easter. <laughs> The focal point of this Panagiri is the icon of the Virgin Mary, and the person responsible for the icon is known as the Panagiras. This year's Panagiras, Alexandros Vernikos, ship owner, explains the significance of the Panagiri. The Panagiri is the catalipa, the Rios, the Visadidis, and the Proto Christianis epochis, and the Rios, the epochis of the Turkocratias όπου η έλλειψη τότε των μέσων επικοινωνίας που έχουμε σήμερα και των περιορισμών, αλλά και η θρησκοληψία που κατήχε όλους, παρήχε σαν μοναδική διέξοδο συναντήσεως, ανταλλαγής απόψεως τη συγκέντρωση των κατοίκων, που ιδίως εδώ στα νησιά ήταν ξεχωριστή σημασία. Ιδιαίτερα στα χρόνια τα 400 της τουρκικής κλαβιάς, τα, μονασ... τα πανηγύρια αυτά ήταν ο τόπος συναντήσεως και αταλλαγής απόψεων για τη διατήρηση και την επιβίωση του ελληνικού έθνους. The holy icon is transported from the house where it's been kept all year to the home of the person who'll look after it for the coming year. First, it must do a round tour of the whole island, calling in at every village on the way. With a ceremonial loaf of bread at its head, the procession starts out on foot on its way to the capital, Apollonia. <laughs> Then the icon is taken by local bus to the port of Camares. by unseasonal thunder, the locals are joined by pilgrims who've arrived by ferry boat from Athens and the port of Athens, Piraeus. And next, the icon takes to sea.
θα περάσει η Παναγία, επιτρέπεται η Παναγία. Some 60 years ago, a terrible plague of locusts threatened the inhabitants of Sifnos. Legend has it that the icon was carried throughout the island from village to village and miraculously drove out the plague, saving the islanders from starvation. Small wonder that the icon is still venerated for this miracle and transported with such elaborate ritual today. From the ferry boat, the icon is brought ashore by a fishing boat, escorted by the local clergy and notables, and by representatives of the Orthodox Church from mainland Greece. Its landing place is the site of another island legend. The icon was lost many years ago and, by a miracle, was found here by a fisherman shining up through the sea. To honor the event, a church was built called Chrysopigi, Golden Spring. It's considered the rightful home of the icon and is now the scene of the culmination of the religious feast. The assembled pilgrims are blessed by the Bishop of the Cyclades. <laughs> Traditional ascension bread is broken, symbolizing brotherly love and marking the start of the more secular feasting. Revithia, chickpea soup, is the traditional meal for the hungry pilgrims. While the good people of Sifnos tucked into their revithia and creas me patates, Katia and I went to meet Stavros, one of the island's oldest inhabitants. <laughs> My first question to him was, Ti dulia canete? What job do you do? I couldn't resist asking Stavros his age. Poso chrononis este? How old are you? Poso chrononis este? Yeah, that's that's something eight. Seventy-eight. 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 Oh yeah. As the evening wore on and the Retsina flowed, Stavros <laughs> began to feel a bit of Greek soul coming on. Kefi is what they call it. True to Sifniot tradition, at the age of 78, he's still a deaf turner of a poetic phrase and a toothless tune. <laughs>
Υπάρχει κι άλλος τρόπος για να το κάνετε. Ναι. Κι άλλο. Ναι. Is there any other way to play? Αυτό είναι πιο γρήγορα. This is more fast. It's, it's extremely advanced worrying there. Yes. Uh, Πού είναι το φαρμα... φαρμακείο. Φαρμακείο. Ναι. Κάτω, την αγορά δεξιά, κάτω. That way. Oh, no. Τι να κάνουμε. What does that mean? What can we do? You see, we Greeks are very philosophical about things. Hmm. What's the phrase? Τι να κάνουμε. Τι να κάνουμε. Very good. Στην υγειά σας. Στην υγειά σας. Γεια σας. Χαρήκαμε στην πραγματική. Στην υγειά σας. Είναι φοβερά, δηλαδή. Ένα καφέ, παρακαλώ. Τι καφέ θέλετε. Παρακαλώ. Μήπως έχετε μουσακά. Όχι. Δεν σημαίνει ότι δεν είναι. Μήπως έχετε σουβλάκια. Όχι. Um, I know. Why don't we ask him what he has got? That's it. And that's. Yeah, the tipotalo. Super. You I know, it's very nice. I do. So the o. So the o. In the Κοντά σου ευτυχία χορταίνω, μακριά σου πεθαίνω. Dawn next day in Sifnos sees the final stages of the Panigiri. The icon is now transported by Kaik across the bay to the medieval village of Castro. Here, the procession will escort it on foot again, passing from church to church, from hand to hand, and finally delivering it to the house where it will remain for the coming year. It's a tradition that has an air of eternity about it, tourism or no tourism. Tourism is, of course, essential for the survival of most Greek island communities, and many would have died already, perhaps, without the economic support of the tourist industry. So there's no point in merely waxing lyrical and romantic about the death of the donkey and the fading glories of fishing and farming. Even so, I still wonder how far tourism in Greece can go before it destroys the very thing many visitors come in search of, Greekness itself. <laughs> Την ιστορική σου υπό του Αποστόλου 